Hello, I'm Yoko, and welcome back to Clam Gem with Year Free. If you haven't seen my previous Clan Gen videos, you should check them out, as this is a series going for the lives of these cats, and there might be some context you're missing. There's two other videos, and I have a playlist that I'll link below. But with that said, let's start this, and let's start with the new cats that are in Star Clan. This year only had one death, but it was quite an important one. So sadly, Dust Cloud died at 83 moons old, leaving behind his mate and his free children. Which is sad enough, but it becomes more concerning when you find out he was murdered. And suddenly, it's time to play detective. Don't look at the screen for a bit if you don't want to see the art of the death, but it's not that graphic, but here it is. Dust Cloud was found murdered on the Creek Dividing Galaxy Clan and one of the bordering clans, Creek Clan. And the picture's off the screen now. So this video will not only be going through what happened to everyone this year, but... As we go through, we might be going through some murder suspects as well as, like, as we get to them based on their actions this year. And I do have an actual answer for who his killer was, but I'll wait until we get there. I was so sad Duskcloud died, he didn't even live long enough to see his kits become warriors, but at least he saw them be apprentices. Um, at least he gets to be with his friend Yellowbush now in Star Clan. but with that said, let's move on to the living cats. Starting with Sandstar, who is still alive and kicking at the age of 134 moons old, the death of Duskcloud and the rising tensions in the clan have deeply troubled Sandstar. There has also been more and more hostility in two of our bordering clans. Galaxy Clan has been feuding with Creek Clan in particular. Sandstar is convinced one of their cats killed Duskcloud and his body was found in the bordering stream. The tension has gotten so bad that Sandstar has actually decided to go to battle with them. No fight has happened yet, but it will be the first thing that happens next year. And I actually made a generator to see how the battle would go, and I'm working on an animatic type thing to show how that battle went. Uh, so look forward to that next time. So suspect number one of who killed Duskcloud is someone in another clan, and regardless of if, if that's true or not, we are going to war over it. Sandstar is tired, and I think his age is getting to him a bit with his rash decisions. But with that said, let's just move on to our new deputy. And our new deputy is Burdockfoot, who is 87 moons old now. Whiskerheart is still alive and kicking, but she stepped down due to an accident that happened to her apprentice, which Burdockfoot was very angry about considering that was her child. Um, I'll get more into detail on that later, but... Just know that Burdockfoot does not like Whiskerheart right now on the same moon that the accident happened. Burdockfoot, Duskcloud, and Stoneleaf actually managed to chase out the dog that killed Kendra and Yellowbush, and they became sort of clan heroes. Burdockfoot was already a well-respected warrior, and her being the only one who had an apprentice before them made the choice of deputy easy. Though now there is a lot of tension between Burdockfoot and Whiskerheart, so, you know, after Duskcloud's death, Burdockfoot was devastated and angry. She's the type of cat whose sadness turns into anger, so she is eager to get her revenge. At this point, Burdockfoot has been through so much, and I feel so bad. She's a very proud mom, though, as her kits are now warriors. Moving on to our medicine cats, first up is Poppywish, who is now 86 moons old. After Duskcloud's death and Burdockfoot's promotion, Poppywish has interpreted the previous prophecy of the Burdock root sitting in a beam of light surrounded by dead and shriveled herbs in the shadows. My dog was choking. She's fine now. Uh, she has determined that to mean, potentially, that Burdockfoot is destined to rise above, but those closest to her are cursed to suffer. She's hoping Duskcloud's death and her child's injury are the last of these tragedies, but she's worried and keeping an eye on her for now. Poppy Wish is also annoyed at the fact that we're going to battle and fears more unnecessary injuries and death, maybe. And our other medicine cat is the newly named 22 moon old Lake Tree, which I like to think the tree in her name is a reference to her brother who has twig as his prefix. She's still really close to him, but gets annoyed with how often he ends up in the medicine cat den. She grew up to be a good speaker, so I imagine she's really good at getting cats to actually listen to instructions in regards to them healing faster. There's no kits currently in the clan right now, but... I also picture her being good at getting fussy kids to listen and to eat their medicine. I really like her and I think she's sweet. That being said, there's not too much to say about her or any of the medicine cats, so let's move on to our warriors. Starting with the previous deputy, 
Whiskerheart, who is now 105 moons old, though it was not age that made her step down. Sandstar gave her one of Burdockfoot's kits as an apprentice to potentially give her something to prove herself with, but it backfired as disaster struck, and I'm still going to wait to say what that was. But on the very first trip out of camp, her apprentice got hurt, and Whiskerheart could not take any stre- t- couldn't take the stress anymore, stepping down from being deputy. It probably also didn't help that Burdockfoot yelled at her. Um, that being said, she's doing a bit better now, but she still feels a need to prove herself somehow. She also wants to mend her relationship with Burdockfoot somehow. She's nervous about the upcoming fight, but is ready to prove that she still has the skills of a warrior to her clan. I really just want Whiskerheart to have a good year for once, and hopefully before she retires. And I'll talk about the next two warriors together, since they're a couple. We have the return of Odd, who is now 102 moons old, so she's getting up there. But we also have a new cat. So last video I mentioned Odd was immediately thinking of love when she joined the clan, and she might have left a lover behind. So this year I was looking out for any of the Odd sees an old friend of theirs prompts while they're on patrol to see potentially if that would be her mate. And the first cat she found was the 96 moon old charismatic tomcat named Bat. And I instantly knew that that was definitely her boyfriend. So I introduced the ship Odd Bat. I think it's perfect. (laughs) Some people think it's a little suspicious of how quickly after Duskcloud's death Bat showed up. But to be honest, he's just the, like, he's just way too low skilled right now and not that good at literally anything for me to think he did it. He's slowly getting better, though. <laughs> I was going to go of a no more new cats policy after Duskcloud died, but I felt if anyone odd would break that rule. She's already pretty old, but there's still potential for odd bat kittens in the future, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, I love this goofy couple. This is adorable. <laughs> And next up is Aspen Runner, who is now 79 moons old. She is very proud of her two children, though she worries about her son a bit. I also imagine she's more comfortable being in the nursery than being a warrior. And while she does her best to help the clan with hunting, she's not the best fighter, um, evident by what happened to her eye from the dog. Her son actually got a scar protecting her from a fox as well. I can picture her immediately running to the nursery to help any expecting mothers and kids whenever there are any. And I picture her wondering if her son will find a mate sometime in the future, though he is still a young warrior now and she's not too actively trying to get him a mate. (laughs) She's not assigned to actively participate in the upcoming battle and is going to help out retreating cats or medicine cats with duties. But yeah, not too much new about Aspen Runner, so let's just move on. Next is a new addition, Blue Light, who is a 73 moon old ambitious former kitty pet. This is another cat... If you guys hear any noises in the background, my cats are going crazy and are running around. But this is another case of no new cats should have joined after Duskcloud's death, but I couldn't resist. We had no kitty pets in the clan, we had one with, and we hadn't had one with an accessory yet. So I let him in, and lore-wise what happened was Cinderpetal and his apprentice were questioning some kitty pets if they knew anything about Duskcloud's death, and Blue Light was immediately intrigued and wanted to help out any way he could. Cinderpetal tried to get him to back off, but Blue Light basically ignored him and joined the clan anyway. Blue Light did not know Duskcloud, and he is ready to fight in the battle to avenge him regardless. He craves justice and adventure in his life. Also, I don't know much about this show beyond some clips on YouTube because it's going everywhere now, but I have a feeling his old house cat name was Bluey from that Australian kids show that's popular right now, even though that's a dog and I'm pretty sure a girl. And with that said, I'm now curious what Yellowbush's old kitty pet name was, so if you have any ideas for her, let me know below in the comments. But yeah, I kind of love Blue Light, but Blue Light and Bat were the only ones to join after Duskcloud's death, and as of now, I'm going to say the borders are closed for a bit. Our next warrior is Stoneleaf, who is now 47 moons old, and still has not gotten an apprentice, which hurts extra due to the most recent ap- apprentices being Burdockfoot's kits, and him being so close to Burdockfoot in general. After Duskcloud's death, Stoneleaf was talking to himself and being standoffish, seemingly a little upset, and a bit after, he spent more time with Burdockfoot to comfort her, seemingly, and she took note of his skills while he was on patrol. Burdockfoot actually wishes Sandstar had given him an apprentice instead of Whiskerheart, who had gotten 
her kitten hurt and thinks he would have been much better. And at this point, I'm just going to tell you, Stoneleaf is the murderer. With Burdockfoot becoming deputy and both Duskcloud and him still not having apprentices, he knew in the future she would prioritize trying to get her mate one. Obviously, Duskcloud was not going to mentor one of his own babies, but future litters were up for grabs, and Stoneleaf was upset. He had killed him without thinking too much and seemed to regret his actions. He tends to flip between being remorseful and trying to prove how good of a warrior he is, so it's really up to how he acts in the future or anything like that. But he might end up being the first cat in the clan who goes to the Dark Forest. We'll have to see. He's feeling really guilty over the clan going to war over his actions, but he also sees it as a good cover-up. Overall, he has a lot of swirling emotions right now. And next up is Cinderpetal, who is now 40 moons old and is actually worried about Stoneleaf. He thinks Stoneleaf is just upset about not getting an apprentice and the fact Burdockfoot is so hurt over her mate's death. Cinderpetal has actually gotten an apprentice, and while he teased Stoneleaf in the past about getting one before him, after actually having one, he realized how hard it was. He too ran into some trouble on the first day, but luckily it was something small and Burdockfoot never found out. Stoneleaf tended to tag along their patrols after that, and Cinderpetal, I swear I can talk, appreciated the help, even if Stoneleaf tended to look, in his opinion, a little sad or angry. I actually got the status in-game that Cinderpetal has a crush on Stoneleaf, and I'll take this Rivals to Lovers with a murder twist drama. I, definitely, that's, that's right up my alley. Um, they're not mates yet, but we'll see if anything happens in the future. Cinderpetal knows Stoneleaf is going through a lot, and also, I may or may not be animating them for a shipping map part, and depending when you see this video, uh, either the work in progress or the finished video should be up on my channel. But yeah, that's Cinderpetal. He's seemingly chilling out a little bit, but he's still got some spunk to him, and he's looking forward to the next battle. Next up, we'll talk about Ravenspot and Aspen Lily, who are now 40 and 37 moons old, respectively. They still haven't had kits, though, and... Even though the same-sex status has turned on, you know, nothing's happened. And I am not so patiently waiting. <laughs> they both would like some, but I think Aspen Lily in particular would love to have some. Ravenspot actually got the remaining kid of Burdockfoot's litter as his apprentice, and did his best to train her and keep her safe, as well as comfort her after her dad's passing. Aspen Lily is really proud of how good a mentor he was to his apprentice, and he likes to think Ravenspot has deputy present potential, but Ravenspot is a humble cat and these conversations don't really spread, especially because he knows that Stoneleaf is pretty upset right now. Aspen Lily is also not assigned to a fighting role in this upcoming battle and is on Medcat support and helping retreat duty, which I think is funny that the two Aspens in the clan aren't fighting. This was basically decided by seeing who never showed up in the generator during the battle. Um, he's a little nervous but confident that Ravenspot will be okay. Aspen Lily is also excited to not be the youngest warrior anymore now that there's new cats. And speaking of them, on to the new warriors. First up is Twigclaw, who is now 22 moons old and has a strong connection to Star Clan. Seems both him and his sister have a gift of sorts with that. You might notice he's pretty scratched up. Uh, while being a generally playful cat, he always wants to rush in and protect others from danger, a trait he learned from his former mentor Ridge. That being said, he's not exactly the strongest, so he gained his shoulder scar protecting his mom from a fox and got a nasty scratch over the eye while protecting the next cat we'll get into from a rogue. My eye scar severity randomizer decided he actually went blind in that eye because of this, and now he has a matching blind spot with his mom, though in this case he still has the eye. I also might start randomizing what eye has the scar for future scars in this game, since Eye scars are on, on the same eye for every cat, and that might get boring. His sister is always lecturing him to be more careful, and he's going to give his mom a heart attack at this rate. And next up, we're starting to get into Burdockfoot and Duskcloud's kits, who all have personalities that I attribute to losing their dad at such a young age. First up is the 16-moon-old Hop Whisker, who is cold and a fantastic hunter. She was the cat that Twigclaw protected from the rogue, and she feels a little guilty for his eye, even though he just laughs it off and says that at least she's safe. Her mentor was Ravenspot, and I started doing a thing where I draw what they did on their first patrol. And on her first patrol, she caught a rabbit, and she really bonded with Ravenspot during her apprenticeship. After her dad's death, she became more cold and reserved, 
But Raven Spot was there to make sure she didn't shut everyone out completely. She's grown into a great young warrior, and I really like her. Next up is her sister Shrewpatch, who is basically mini Burdock Foot, both in her looks and the fact that her personality is now vengeful as well. Her mentor was Cinderpetal, and on their first patrol, they ran into some two-leg trash, and she got a little sick from it. Um, I just looked up common litter and decided it was a soda. Due to what happened to her brother on the same day that that happened to them, both of them just kept it to themselves and she didn't want her mentor to get in trouble, so she just dealt with a bellyache for a bit. After her dad's death, she became really bitter and angry, always saying she wants to get revenge on the cat who did it. An awkward statement when Stoneleaf was often helping train her. She actually really liked Stoneleaf and I like to think she picked up her good teacher skill from him since I think he's a great teacher or something like that. I can only imagine what she'd go through when she finds out the truth of what happened to her dad. As of right now, she's determined to claw some Creek Clan warriors for revenge. And last of Burdock Foot's litter, and the warriors in general, is Cricket Flower, who is also 16 moons old, and he is bloodthirsty and very smart, which is honestly a terrifying combination. His mentor was Whiskerheart, and the accident that happened on his first day finally was... He ran into a badger, and if you don't want to see that, um, it's going to be on screen, and I'll tell you when it's gone. So he ran into a badger on patrol on his very first day, and he lost his tail. He was not too happy at Whiskerheart either, and is off the screen now. And he's a bit of an angsty boy now, even though I imagine that this was probably his own fault, and he probably just rushed off to fight and didn't listen to her. I kind of picture him as the brat that runs to his mom to get people in trouble for things that he did. He is excited for the upcoming battle and can't wait to shred some cats. Honestly, with these siblings having the personalities cold, vengeful, and bloodthirsty, I am concerned for their futures. And last in Galaxy Clan is our elders. Ridge, who is now 132 moons old, and a new addition, Buzzard Daisy, the clever old man who used to be a loner while my cats are going crazy in the background. He's 128 moons old and actually joined right before Duskcloud died, so for a little bit I was concerned we invited a murderous old man into the clan, but he didn't do anything suspicious so he was ruled out pretty quickly. I like to imagine him and Ridge have a good friendship going on in the Elder's Den since both of them were loners who joined the clan when they were already pretty old. That being said, despite being retired, I still think they like to go out and hunt every now and again since they both were used to taking care of themselves, though their age is catching up to them, specifically Ridge and Buzzard Daisy a little bit, but I like the idea of stubborn elders that refuse to just relax in camp and let people take care of them. They're just like, no, we want to go out, we want to stretch our legs. We'll, we'll still help, it's okay, we're not retired or anything. <laughs> I think it's adorable. And before this video ends, I want to briefly go over our neighboring clans. Mostly just the leaders and maybe a bit more if needed. Kind of just want to at least mention them since we're going to war with one of them soon. The disclaimer, I don't, play as, I don't pay as close attention to these cats as they're mostly just there to fill out the world. But the clan we get along best with is... Bug Clan, led by the 143 moon old Holly Star, who is altruistic and has a great connection to Star Clan. Strong connection. All these clan names were just randomly generated, by the way. Bug Clan is the smallest clan and has been cursed with death and disasters. They live by many thunder paths, and many cats are missing legs or injured in some other way, forced to retire from getting hit by monsters, uh, aka cars if you haven't seen this series. But I think if you're on year three of this, series that I'm making, I think you probably know at least a little bit about warrior cats. <laughs> Sandstar has always lent a helping hand when needed, and these are our closest allies. And at some point, they only had like five warriors that could do things. So this is this is a clan that's not, not doing the best. Next up is Sharp Clan, led by the 147 moon old playful Otterstar. Otterstar himself is becoming less influential in the views of his clan, due to his old age, and it seems his age is getting to some of his decisions, and he doesn't quite seem all there sometimes. The clan is basically led by the vengeful deputy Berry Eyes, who looks down on Bug Clan as well as Galaxy Clan for being too soft and helping Bug Clan all the time, claiming Sandstar lacks a spine. This clan has the most disasters and is quite prickly, like half the clan is a variation of mostly white cats, by the way which I imagine makes it hard to hunt in seasons that don't have snow, and when there is snow in Leaf Bear, there's less prey anyway, 
So this clan has had a lot of struggles. Now that I think about it, all the clans have had a lot of struggles. It's not going too good for everyone that isn't Galaxy Clan. And lastly, we have Creek Clan, which is the clan we will be fighting. Led by the young 38-moon-old Kestrel Star, she is charismatic and a good fighter, and she is actually the third leader. Despite being the largest clan, the leader has always been the most self-sacrificing, and this clan actually has the first Dark Forest cat. A cat named Sagepatch and his mate Lilypelt had a plot to murder the deputy together, but Sagepat was killed in self-defense by, de- by said deputy, and Lilypelt was exiled. They actually have free living children in the clan, and Kestrel Star refuses to tell anyone outside her own clan of this event due to not wanting to seem weak to the other clans. Though she suspects Lily Pelt might have been Duskcloud's murderer, she refuses to say anything. And her refusal to bring up this possibility and determination to prove the strength of her clan is what leading to this upcoming battle. And yeah, that's the gist of our bordering clans. Galaxy Clan overall is mostly either very distressed or very angry right now, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts or predictions in the comments, and I'll try to get year 4 out soon, but I am doing something a little ambitious, so we'll see. The current goal is before the end of January, but you know, either end of January or beginning of February is when it should come out. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, and maybe check out some other video from me. My socials are linked below, and my commissions are open on my Instagram if you'd like to support me that way. With that said, thank you so much for watching and all the support lately. It's, it's been crazy. And I'll see you next week. Peace.